and today we're going to look at how to revise over the summer for your GCSEs, A-levels or the 11 plus exam. Now, if you have a teenager who is finishing year 10, they're about to enter year 11, which means they're going to be sitting their GCSE finals in the summer of 2021. Equally, if you have a teenager who has just completed the AS levels and about to embark on the A level, their final years, they're going to also be sitting their finals in 2021. Or perhaps your child is going to enter the 11 plus exam, in which case they will be sitting it in November 2020. So how to revise over the summer holidays? Well, the key thing is to be empathetic with your child or teenager. The whole world has been dealing with this pandemic and in one way or another, there have been lockdowns. In the UK, this is starting to ease up. As a result, people are wanting to go outside. Teenagers, children are wanting to socialise with their friends in a safe manner. Perhaps they haven't seen them for four months. On top of that, it's sunny outside. It makes you lethargic and tired and it makes you just want to go outside and play and have fun. So how then do you strike a balance? Well, it's futile arguing with your child. You may feel that they haven't been applying themselves, especially when they were officially at school. Perhaps they treated it as an extended holiday. However, going into judgment, criticising them is not going to be helpful here. What's important is to remind your child of why they are studying, why they are doing the exam. What is the importance to them? Question them. So, for example, ask them, why do they want to pass the exam? What will it look like if they do? Equally, ask them what it would look like if they don't pass and ask them what it means to them if they don't pass their exam. By doing this, you can help to alleviate some of the fears that they may have in failure. Because sometimes, with, with even us adults, if we feel like we're not going to make it, we might give up. And what's most important is not about necessarily when they do it, but just completing it. And I always like to remember, you know, anecdotes that can help here. And one that comes to mind is Derek Redman, an Olympian athlete. He actually tore um, a ligament in his leg, which prevented him from finishing the race. He heard the pop and went down. His father in the stand, seeing him, ran over to him. He bypassed everyone, got to his son on the track in front of 65,000 people, held him up and together they finished the race. They came dead last, but they finished the race. The whole crowd erupted in applause. The whole crowd were elated. And guess what? People may not remember who won the gold, silver or bronze, but finishing that race with his father's arm around him. What can you take away from that? Well, it didn't matter what had happened. It was that they finished it. And if you can instill this in your child by explaining if they are frightened of they're failing the exam, maybe they're frightened of disappointing you or disappointing themselves or disappointing their teachers, then by telling them, actually, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon, or it is an Olympic race, it's about finishing it. So complete the course, complete to the best of your ability. And consider why you want to pass the exam. Is it to go on to another academic path? Is it to get a dream job? What is the purpose? And then if what you get isn't going to allow you to do that, then redo it. And I think that's really important. Now, perhaps your child isn't that bothered about it. In fact, they may have just given up. They may think, actually, this is pointless. I really can't stand it. Then perhaps it's worthwhile considering what other options are there for them. Perhaps it isn't for them right now and looking at other meaningful things that they can do rather than making them feel bad. They can always go back to it later on. Remember, we're all in the same boat. 
Now, once we've established the why, what's important is to help develop a revision plan with your child and be realistic. Don't make it just, you know, locking yourself up in a room. That's not helpful at all. Try to be creative, make sure there's breaks so that you can, uh, you know, rejuvenate, rejuvenate and, you know, get that rest. That's really important. And remember, it's important to be really specific with the times and perhaps what's going to be studied. Obviously be flexible. So for example, if you say Monday morning at um, 9 a.m. studying math, you know, try to stick to that. But if, for example, the previous, uh, you know, day, they were struggling with science, perhaps they want to revisit that then so that it's fresh in their mind. Nothing wrong with that. But the reason for that is if you don't work your plan, the work will just become overwhelming. So create a plan and work that plan. And that way then you will set your teenager, your child up for success. But it's important it comes from them because then they will feel responsible and ownership over it, which is really key. Once that's established, I know that we have like a to-do list and, you know, of what, what needs to be done. And I think that's really vital and really important, but also create a completed list. So you can even have it on a board, on a wall. So you can have a to-do list and then the completed list. And why? Because if they see things being moved from the to-do list and put into the completed list, it immediately makes them feel better. They feel an achievement and sense of accomplishment. And that will just create more motivation for them to do more whereas if they're just looking straight at the to-do list it can see overwhelming whereas if they can see they are making progress that's really important what's been amazing during lockdown is the feedback from children and teenagers one of the key things that have they have found really difficult is the lack of feedback from their teachers a lot of them wanted reassurance wanted to be told they're doing a great job and so by allowing them to have that external feedback, it really will help to motivate them and to see their own progression. And they can see that they've worked hard. And equally, if, for example, they're not getting the tasks done, perhaps it's worthwhile looking at their plan and breaking it down even more. So then once you've got the revision plan, you've created the to-do list and the complete list, then what? Well, it's about being creative with the revision encourage your child or teenager to actually narrate the textbooks perhaps in a funny voice do it in the style of david attenborough record themselves doing it as well so they can play it back by making it fun and imaginative it doesn't make it such a boring dry task perhaps encourage study sessions if they can't meet up with their friends to do so do it online conduct a zoom call why well again that mirrors real life when you're having to collaborate in a team so it's really important not only is it exercising the recalling of the information but it's also exercising their communication skills which is paramount in society especially in our global community so offer that opportunity offer that suggestion to them and then on top of that if possible try to get them to apply it to a real life settings now that might be a little bit challenging for example, with specialist subjects, perhaps like engineering or maths, especially the advanced stuff. But perhaps if you can, you know, enroll on an online camp. I put a few links below in, in the, the, the blog and in the vlog. But, um, you know, if, if possible, enroll them in such classes. That way then they get to use it in real life settings. Create opportunities by perhaps getting them to create the tutorial of the information to break down to people in younger years. You know, ask them to set up a tutorial in, I don't know, photosynthesis, how it works, the, the outline of the structure of the leaf, the leaf, you know, the chlorophyll, the chloroplasts, their functions, you know, that way then it has a practical purpose and it might help to, again, make it a little bit more enjoyable and applicable to their, you know, real life. Um, for English, again, getting them to read articles. And again, if you can model that behavior, perhaps you don't like reading yourself. But again, in this time, if you can show an interest by reading articles and discussing it, it makes it less boring than just reading from, from a screen or from a book. That way then they're having that dynamic conversation and it gets them to hear another perspective, another point of view, which is actually a skill in the exam. So, 
Overall then, to recap, one, yes, it is important to revise over the holidays, but be empathetic. It's not about just passing an exam. It's about setting your child up for success and getting them to enjoy learning and not resent it. So that way then, if for whatever reason they don't meet the grade, they won't just give up. They will have the resilience to do it again, to try again, so that they do succeed. After all, that's what's important. Success is great, but failure does happen. We do all stumble at some point and allowing them to know that they will be okay. And after all, if, if it is that important, you will keep going, right? You wouldn't just give up. Like the example of Derek Redmond, it was important that he finished that race and his father knew that. Rather than just being disappointed or giving up, they crossed the line. And in the official Olympian records, it counts as a disqualification. So it doesn't count as him finishing the race. But you are 65,000 people that were there. They finished that race and they did a lot more than just finish a race. I mean, I don't know why I just did that. I'm not undermining an Olympian um, or the Olympics in any such an imagination. But my point is, it's more than just that race. What he demonstrated was character and motivated a generation. And in one of the Olympic, uh, you know, commentaries, where they said, you know, you can measure the speed, the power of something or someone, but you can't measure courage. And he demonstrated that. And so did his dad. So I think it's worthwhile instilling that in your child and your teenager. And then be creative with it. Create study groups. Bring it to life by allowing them to apply it to real life settings if possible. You know, enrolling to our online camps. Or again, even if you personally don't like it, but getting involved by discussing and reading articles online. 